The cockpit of this aircraft has been designed to produce a comfortable and pleasant working environment that meets the ergonomic requirements of today's pilots. Workstations for two pilots are provided, each with a fully adjustable seat. A third occupant seat is located at the rear. A fourth seat can also be installed at the customer's request. Here is a plan view of the cockpit. Select the third occupant seat. Here is a plan view of all the seat locations. Adequate stowage facilities are available at locations throughout the cockpit. The cockpit layout is arranged so that all the aircraft systems, their logic, switches and indicators are conveniently displayed in front of you. The crew stations, being forward-facing, allow all of these systems and instruments to be easily monitored. Select any of these highlighted areas within the cockpit for a more detailed view or the forward arrow to continue. The overhead panel contains a concentration of the aircraft system's indications and their respective push buttons. The systems are activated and deactivated by operating these push buttons. They are arranged on the overhead panel in a logical and instinctive layout. PBs are indicated by a surrounding white line. This line does not exist on annunciator lights. The usual flight parameters are displayed in the conventional T layout in front of the pilots on the primary flight display and navigation display. Other important flight information is also shown in analog form on these flight instruments. Other flight parameters are displayed on the flight control unit and the EFIS control panel mounted on the glare shield. The center of the main instrument panel houses, among others, the engine indications and two ECAM displays. The pedestal between the two pilot stations provides the location for the FMS, CDUs, the engine thrust levers and the trim wheels, and the radio and navigation control panels. These are the facilities available on the left-hand side of the captain's workstation. The right-hand side of the first officer's workstation is symmetrical. The windows can be opened after releasing the locking mechanism and operating the opening handle. These are the facilities available on the right-hand side of the first officer's workstation and the cockpit ceiling. The facilities are similar on the left-hand side of the cockpit. The maintenance panel is located on the right-hand side behind the third occupant seat. The area surrounding the third occupant seat provides the location for these items and stowage facilities. Push-button technology has made it possible to integrate all of the system controls on the overhead panel. Logical and simple operation are the basic criteria in the panel's design. Under normal operating conditions, None of the indications are illuminated, although flow bars may be visible. This forms the basis of the lights-out philosophy. Apart from a few exceptions, the illumination of a light indicates a failure or an abnormal push-button switch selection. Here, the number one outer tank pump has been switched off. Press the number one outer tank pump push-button to switch the pump back to on. Pressing the push button causes the light to go out and orders the system to be restored. 
A consistent application of clear color codes is also used to aid system identification. Blue lights are used to indicate a temporary but normal operation. Green indicates a backup system has been selected. White is used to indicate a control in an unusual condition. Amber indications and red indications are used to indicate the level of a warning. The brightness of all the annunciator lights in the cockpit can be adjusted by operating the annunciator light selector switch. It's located on the right-hand side of the overhead panel. The switch can be set to three positions, test, bright and dim. We shall study the test position later on in this lesson. In the bright position, the brightness of all the annunciator lights is set at maximum. Set the switch to the dim position. When the switch is set to dim, the brightness of the annunciator lights on the captain's, first officer's and centre instrument panel is automatically dimmed to a level measured by a photocell. The annunciators on the overhead panel and pedestal are dimmed to a preset level. The serviceability of the annunciator light bulbs can be tested by either a manual and or an automatic test. The manual test is carried out using the test facility on the annunciator light selector switch. The automatic test uses the automatic test push button. This push button is located next to the annunciator light selector switch. The manual test is used to confirm the operation of those lights that are not tested by the automatic test. We shall study the manual test first. Set the annunciator light selector switch to the test position now. In the test position, all of the annunciator lights are illuminated at the brightest setting. A visual inspection will identify any faulty bulbs. Set the switch to an appropriate setting when the test is complete. We shall now take a look at the automatic annunciator test. However, not all of the annunciator lights are tested and therefore must be manually tested. These are listed for you later on in the lesson. Select the automatic test push button to start the automatic annunciator test. Depressing the push button latches the switch and illuminates the on light. The automatic test sequence is started and all the annunciator lights which were not already illuminated flash on in a predetermined sequence. If no faulty bulbs are located, the automatic test on light goes off and the test is reset. During the test, all digital displays are replaced by the figure 8 except the fuel quantity indication which remains unaffected during refueling operations. When a faulty bulb is identified, the test sequence is stopped, the fault light illuminates, and the lights around the faulty bulb flash. The faulty bulbs must be replaced by maintenance. To continue the automatic test, you must press the reset push button. Reset the automatic test now. The push button unlatches on completion of the test. You must visually check these lights on the overhead panel the mode selector units, the inertial system display unit, the fire handles, the fuel quantity indicator low level lights and the engine trim push button for the GE engine only. 
You must also manually test these lights on the main instrument panel. The altimeters, the landing gear lever, the thrust rating panel, and the slats and flaps position indicator. Finally, on the glare shield, manually test the annunciator lights for the flight control unit, the EFIS control panel, and the automatic landing lights. That concludes this lesson on the cockpit layout. Now attempt the quiz that follows this topic.